This is a kind of unique example that, that is present at the end of the lecture slides. Um, it's kind of a, a unique example because it's, it's I mean, it, it, you can have something like this in the field, but it's unlikely uh, that you will find something like this. I mean, it's not common, that's what I mean. It's, it's not common. But it could happen. I mean, you can have a situation that, that looks just like this. So look, there's a lake, okay? And the elevation of the water table is 167.3 meters. You could say that this is the datum here, just for reference, so we can have some kind of reference point. Okay. So, that means that the distance from the datum to the water table is 167.3 meters. Okay. Now, this is a profile, as you can see, it's a cross section, right? Remember the profile? Here's the tree, here's the clay, sorry, here's uh, the soil, right? The soil interface between the air, soil, and then the lake and uh, the soil. So, the water table is up here. Now, um, this whole thing is made of clay, okay? But there is a seam of sand. So a seam is a thin layer. So there is a thin layer of sand that extends into and out of the slide, okay? And that seam is connected to the lake. So as you can imagine, as you know already, K, uh, sorry, clay has a low permeability, a low hydraulic conductivity and sand has a much larger hydraulic conductivity. So what's happening here is that this lake water is seeping through the sand seam and exiting somewhere else, okay? So what engineers have done is they have, they've come in here and placed a piezometer, right? This sensor, which is just a tube, and they have basically placed it right there in the seam, right? And the water has risen to an elevation of 165 feet, uh, sorry, meters. 165 meters. 167.3 meters. Okay? So, it says here, given the hydraulic conductivity of the sand is 4 times 10 to the minus 2 centimeter per second, and the reservoir length into the board is a thousand meters. Okay, so this whole thing is a thousand meters in this direction, into the board or into the slide. Compute Q, the seepage loss, that is the flow rate, the amount of water lost per unit time through the seam. Okay, now, what do we have here? Well, we have a situation where we need to calculate Q. This is a 1D flow problem because the, the water only flows in one direction. Okay? It doesn't flow up and then down and then up again. It just flows in one direction through the seam. So we can use Darcy's law. So all we have to do is determine these three parameters so that we can cre uh, you know, use the law to get Q. <clears throat> so, K is already given because the K of the seam, of the soil that makes the seam, right? The sand. So that's given. What about the area? Well, we want the cross-sectional area for flow, right? Now, remember, in this case, we don't use AF. We use just A. Okay, that's very important. So we talked about AF. We talked about what what AF means and what A means. This is the area of the system, right? This is the area of the voids. For calculation of the pore velocity, we use this one. For all other calculations, we use this one. Make sure that you know that. Okay. So what is the area, cross-sectional area for flow, for where the flow occurs, for the system, this one? Well, the flow occurs like this, right? So, if you think about the, the area, it's actually a rectangle. 
Okay, so the water is actually seeping through the seam in this direction. So, <clears throat> what is this distance here? I'm looking at the seam as if I were uh, a molecule of water. I'm going into the seam like this, into the page, right here on the, on the side here. Okay? So I'm entering the seam like this. It's like saying I'm entering like that. So what is the this distance? Well, that is a distance into the slide, right? So that's a thousand meters. What about that distance? That is the thickness of the seam, 3.2 meters. Clearly, this is not to scale. Clearly, this is not to scale, right? I mean, this is very, very thin and very long, okay? But the area is a thousand times 3.2 meters squared okay what is the i what's i the gradient okay we're gonna see if yes i can write here the gradient which is the 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 last one we need the gradient which is the last one we need here <clears throat> delta h over l the change in head from one point to another divided by the length over which the head is lost. Remember that definition. Memorize it. The gradient is the change in head between two points divided by the distance over which the head is lost. Okay? So, delta H <coughs> over L. <coughs> we actually have a, a, a somewhat of a Darcy setup here. As you can see, there's a water table here and a water table here. So, the points in question are these two. One and two. What is the distance between those two points over which the head is lost? What head? Well, this head. The distance is 256 meters, is shown here. What is the delta H? Well, what is the head at this point? Total head. Total head is the elevation head. Remember, this is the datum. Look. So, total head, sorry, elevation head plus pressure head. 167.3. What is the head over here? The head is the elevation head plus the pressure head. That's 165. Elevation, pressure, heads. 165. So now we have, this is in meters, right? So now we have delta H, L. We have the area. Right? And we have K, which is this. Now, this is in meters squared, this is in meters. Well, actually, these meters cancel, but this case in centimeters per second, you have to convert this to meters. Make sure that all the units are uh, consistent. The only place where you don't have to have consistent units is when you compute or when you use Hazen's correlation. Okay? So, here's the formal solution, I guess, that in, in a more organized way. Q is equal to KIA, K is given. I is delta H over L. We already know how to get these two numbers. That's between points 1 and 2. The distance between them is 256. The area is 3.2 meters times 1,000 meters. Right? And then we use the Kia, Q is equal to Kia equation, to determine right there the seepage loss or the flow rate. 0 0.0115 meters cubed are lost of water, are lost every second through this sea. Okay? Now, here uh, they have uh, actually, I guess I have, I have calculated the, I changed the, um, the units, I, I calculated the value for meter squared per meter cubed per hour just because. That way we can get a, like a nicer number than 0 0.0115. But 
this answer is perfectly fine. Okay? So that's one example of uh, 1D flow in the field, which is actually uh, quite unique.